Hello students, welcome to the theory class of seed production of vegetable, tuber and spices crops. Today's topic is on seed sampling and purity analysis. So when a farmer buys seeds from the market, this is something what you would like to expect in his field plot when he sows the seeds, which is uniform growth and development, uniform vigor, uniform germination and uniform resistance against disease and insects. While this is another scenario in which the farmers wouldn't like to see, which is ununiform field plot, some of them are ungerminated, some of them are not vigorous, and some of them are healthy. So this is something which is not expected from the field, uh, from the field which is sown from the seeds that is brought from the market. This is usually because of lack of seed testing and lack of seed standards in the seed lot that the farmer buys. So in order to avoid this, we need to have seed testing. And what is seed testing? It is a test to determine the standards of the seed lot in the basis of physical purity, moisture purity, germination purity and other distinguished varieties which, is, which can be contributed to genetic purity as well. So the seed testing services are required from time to time and not only once <coughs> whenever the seed lot has to be moved from one place to another and whenever from a seed lot has to be uh, distributed to the farmers. So this seed testing is required every time. So it is possible for those seeds which are going to be produced, which are going to be sell and use. So the seeds are going to be, which are going to be produced are under the category foundation seed cell to the next slide here we have seed testing laboratories <coughs> these are infrastructures which can facilitate testing of the particular seed samples <coughs> sent on them so these uh, the results of the seed testing uh, done by seed testing laboratories are to be analyzed by seed certifying agencies located at, at every state and uh, the, the, uh, they will be providing a certificate based on that to the seed lot. Seed testing laboratories are also located in every state and the type of analysis that we are going to do in seed testing laboratories can be classified into four different sections. First section is for purity testing. Under purity testing we are going to test for cleanliness of the seed lot which is also known as physical purity test. Testing of genuineness of the cultivar, which is also known as genetic purity test. And in the second one, we have section for moisture testing. Moisture testing is required when the seed has to be stored for a longer period of time. The amount of moisture content has to be reduced in, in an optimum amount so that the metabolic activities for growth and development and germination is reduced during the storage period and it is activated only when in the in the growing seasons so during the growing seasons so seed has to be tested for uh, its viability and germination and at the same time vigor these are important when the seed has to be germinated the seed has to be revived for its growing period the next thing is uh, collection of samples <coughs> so from a large stake of seed sample uh, seed stake or seed lot in the uh, storehouse or also in his warehouse, we are going to collect samples which is known as primary samples of as small as 10% of each bag or each unit from the seed lot and we are going to form at least 10 primary samples. From these 10 primary samples we are going to mix together and form a composite samples uh, by mixing and these composite samples from these composite samples we are going to sort out submitted samples or duplicates of the submitted samples. The, one of these submitted samples is going to send into the seed testing laboratories for testing. So if the submitted sample is sufficient, it is okay. If it is not sufficient, so the duplicate samples will be <coughs> sent to the seed testing laboratory or otherwise if it is sufficient, so the seed duplicate samples will be sent back to the seed lot again. So this submitted sample will be reduced again into a smaller size uh, sample called working samples from where we are going to uh, divide the sample into 
several components like uh, pure seed, other seed components, inert matter. Coming to the different samples, different types of samples. The first one being um, primary sample. It is 10% of the amount of seeds that is taken from every entry or every bag. Okay, uh, several primary uh, samples are going uh, going to be collected of at least 10 from each uh, seed lot. Okay, so from these 10 samples, they are going to uh, form a composite samples by mixing. And there are certain conditions where the seed uh, composite samples can be formed and uh, certain conditions where the seed, uh, the composite samples are not necessary to form. If in certain conditions where the primary sample size is uh, more than 1 kg, the composite sample is not required if the amount of seed in the primary sample is less than 1 kg a bulk or of composite seed. Uh, <coughs> A composite seed is formed from at least 10 primary samples. From these com uh, composite samples, the some summated samples and some more uh, duplicate samples are going to be formed. The summated sample is supposed to send into the seed testing laboratories and from this, in, in the seed testing laboratories, the summated sample is further reduced into working samples so that it is feasible for testing in the <coughs> for purity analysis next thing is sampling in the seed testing laboratories uh, like <coughs> the previous slide we have discussed earlier submitted sample is going to receive in the laboratory and it is going to further reduce into working samples and these working samples <coughs> from these working samples we are going to analyze the purity analysis and the method of reduction of the submission uh, submitted sample to working sample can be done with the most popular method which is mixing and dividing of seeds um, <clears throat> which facilitates re representation of homogeneous seed samples from every uh, submitted samples and this also reduces the submitted sample to a desired size Several methods which are used for mixing and dividing are mechanical method, modified method, modified halving method, hand halving method, random cup method, and spoon method. Coming to the mechanical method, this uh, reduces the sample size to uh, <coughs> half of the uh, submitted sample, and it is not usually done in chaffy and fuzzy seeds. Um, it is usually some of the objectives of a mechanical dividing method is to mix the seed samples and make homogeneous as far as possible and to reduce the seed size to uh, half okay usually half without any biasness and mixing and passing through it uh, through the divider should be done in at least two parts and it sh if necessary the the process should be conducted twice or more than twice uh, until and unless you get a homogeneous seed sample. Next thing is uh, types of mechanical dividers. The first type of mechanical divider here we are, to dis we are going to discuss here is Boiner divider. In this we are going to have a hooper <coughs> collecting unit, a valve uh, controlling unit, a cone, a spreading or distributor, a duct, a channel, Okay, and or other uh, outer funnels and collecting panels. So seeds are going to be poured here, and once the seed is filled here, the valve is going to open. After opening the valve, the seeds are going to be distributed to the sides of the boundaries of this bin, and which uh, is going to be channelized through the ducts. Okay, so it is going to the seeds are going to travel into the boundaries of the cylinder and it is automatically going to uh, travel into the uh, collecting pans by gravity. Next thing is soil divider. The principle is same as that of Boiner divider. Uh, in this uh, <coughs> the channels are arranged in straight rows okay? and hoppers are there where the seed sample is going to collect it here and the channels will separate the seeds based on sizes and they are going to be collected seeds of different sizes are going to be collected here into two different halves 
and this is usually done for large seat size and chaffy seats next thing is a centrifugal or gamete divider and this is the principle uh, which uh, runs here is the centrifugal force principle works here so in this uh, we have the same uh, equipment the same units here uh, the hooper where the seats is going to be collected the, uh, the only difference here is a rubber spinner attached here which provides centrifugal force the, as soon as the seat reaches here the the rubber spinner which is assisted by a motor electric motor so it will beat the seats and uh, so that the seat hits the boundaries of the cylinder okay yes. and it will travel in a circular manner and then the seats will be separated into different halves based on the sizes okay next thing is random curve method in this method we uh, this is usually followed when the working sample is of 10 grams which is less and they are not extremely chaffy and uh, which are not bouncy and which does not roll okay so for example brassica species so in this case six to eight different small cups are placed on a random uh, on a random randomly on a tray and in this in this tray uh, preliminary mix seeds is going to pour in the tray superficially and <clears throat> we are going to uh, take the samples take the collected seeds in this cu small cups six to eight different cups into as a working sample okay next thing is modified halving method in this method uh, we are going to use a tree where the cubicle separations are there in every separations in every alternate separations there will be a hollow space and a cubicles where they will be filled in the bottom of a uh, of the uh, tray okay so the same thing here the preliminary mix seeds are going to be poured here uniformly and the seeds which fold on the ground <coughs> are going to be collected in such a manner that uh, every alternate samples okay every alternate samples here are going to be collected as working samples from this okay next thing is spoon method in this method uh, we are going to use we are going to require a tray a spatula or a spoon and this method is usually done for small seed size and <coughs> the same methodology is going to be followed here we are going to pre uh, pour the preliminary mix seeds to the tray uniformly and once the seeds are poured into the tray, we are not going to disturb it and we are going to take with the help of the spoon or spatula five different samples from the random places of this tray. Okay, so from this, uh, these collected random samples are going to be uh, collected as working samples. And next thing is hand having method. So in this method, we are going to form a mound. The, the submitted sample is going to form a mound. And then from this submitted sample, we are, uh, it is going to be divided into two with hand equal, uh, equal parts. And then the two equal parts is going to further divide into four, two, two each, which makes four. And the four is going to divide again into eight units. So from these eight units, samples are going to be collected from the alternate alternate mounds okay which is formed here or it can be as such okay next thing is uh, the purity analysis uh, so in purity analysis we are going to do here physical purity analysis so uh, it is it is to determine the amount of different components of the seed sample or working sample which are pure seed other crop seeds wheat seeds and inner seeds okay coming to the method of purity separation so the first thing to do is uh, we need we'll be needing two equipments which is seed blower <coughs> Or seed sieving, and then we will be needing another uh, another equipment, which is uh, also known as diapanoscope, 
or creative workload which workload which requires which which um, which involves um, working board a large working board attached with a lens okay and usually it has to be provided with a light light facilities and the first in the first case we are going to place the seed sample which is uh, <coughs> which is blown which is um, under under undergone through the uh, seed blower into <coughs> Uh, which divides the seed sample into inert matter and other crop seeds okay based on different weights okay the different the separated uh, components are going to again go through the uh, purity work board okay in this we are going to uh, identify each and every kind of seeds with uh, their differential species or genus based on the seed morphology or some weed seeds can be collected which are not possible with seed blowers okay which are not which cannot be uh, segregated based on weeds of seeds okay so in these seeds are going to be the components are going to be separated by the different weights or different uh, <coughs> uh, different sizes well in this case it is visually going to be separated by uh, by morphological character of the seeds which can be separated based on uh, wheat seeds uh, from the mixture of wheat seeds other crop seeds from different genus other distinguishable varieties and so and so next thing is uh, purity separations which are different components of the uh, the purity analysis so the first uh, component is pure seed so in this kind uh, this this is the type of this is the component which the farmer is looking out for the, the purity is asked for so this is the actual uh, amount which is required in major component and the second one is other crop seeds so this may be some crop some other crop seeds which were mixed during the sampling or which were mixed with during uh, application of farm equipments and so and so so this happens so frequently in seed sampling and uh, and at the same time um, farming okay in every uh, farming practices this happens so other crop seeds has to be removed from the working sample the amount of uh, other crop seed has to be estimated the wheat seeds the amount of wheat seeds also which is um, which can be objectionable wheat seeds common weeds like cyanodactyl and noxious weeds which are which of any kind can be of uh, can be weighted in as one of the component and next thing is inner matter and this can be of uh, granules chaffs uh, soil particles broken seeds which are or dead seeds which are uh, not a, having a potential of growing into a plant <clears throat> coming to the method method of observation so in this case we are going to uh, weight we are going to take the different components weights based on the uh, weight of the working samples so accuracy matters when it comes to the different components since we are taking the size the amount of different components in a very small uh, size so we are going to uh, have an accuracy on it so at what level so if the amount of working sample is less than one gram so we are going to have four decimal places below the point okay and if the amount of working sample is 1000 gram which is one kg there, there won't be any there won't be necessary for any uh, decimal points below the uh, point okay so once the weights different weights of the components are taken so the percentage of components are uh, determined with the help of this formula which is weight of the individual component divided by total weight of the component okay weight of individual components say for example pure seed which is going to be divided by weight of the working sample okay in 200 so usually uh, the working sample weight 
should be equal to the weights total weights of the pure seed other uh, crop seeds wheat seeds and inert matter which are different components of working sample so this should be of equal amount okay but uh, if there is any deviations which exceeds more than one percent the analysis should be repeated okay and uh, duplicate test sometimes is required when if the analysis results is near the borderline and it doesn't match up with the seed standards okay and it so in that case one more test is needed one or one more test is done and an average is taken so that the seed standard is is matched so in case of determination of husless seeds uh, say for example in case of sunflower or paddy 400 seeds are taken from the pure seed of uh, and, and the number of seeds with, without husk are counted <coughs> and in this case the number of husless seeds are to be divided by 400 into 100 which is uh, <coughs> which which determines the amount of husless seeds when it comes to seed standards so we have so when it comes to the seed standards there are minimum and maximum uh, permissible limits for different components of the uh, seed classes okay for the seed classes such as this so although it is same for pure seed and inert seed which is 98% and 2% in both while when it comes to other crop seeds and total wheat seeds we have uh, 5 here in foundation seed and 10 here in uh, certified seeds this shows that there is uh, more quality requirement in foundation seed when it compares to uh, certified seed <coughs> and it also applies the same for breeder seed breeder seed requires more amount of uh, purity 100% here uh, well uh, the amount of permissible limit for other crop seed and total wheat seed is zero and so this goes uh, for every seed classes when the seed classes the seed classes goes from breeder seed to certified seed the seed quality degrades and so does the uh, permissible limit and the seed standards coming to the end of the slide if you have any questions